Hi guys! Today we are going to do something completely different because I am completely stuck with the editing of this video. So prepare for a little bit more rambling than usual and I promise you the next video will be completely focused on the storyline again. And also in the second half of this video we will take a look at Adriana's story. I guess this episode is more about the strategic part of playing a game even though it is going to be a bit chaotic. So don't say I didn't warn you. So the thing about this episode is that I started to film and edit it at least five times. It was supposed to be part of the first season. It was actually supposed to be filmed right before the fall festival. So Adriana would be the last household that we play uh, before ending the round, ending the first round. So I shot a little bit of the footage in the first season and then I thought it would be the first episode of the second season and that also didn't turn out quite how i planned so what i'm stuck with now is several <laughs> several parts of the footage that i filmed what i want to share with you in this episode is some view behind the scenes of how this custom neighborhood was planned because i planned most of it in an excel sheet when i saw cindy's uh, edgewood I really love that series and uh, it gave me so much inspiration to build an entire, entirely new custom neighborhood. So I started planning the essential jobs and the essential DNA sets and everything that I thought would be fun to make a, a custom neighborhood and to make it more random. So yeah, I started out with a lot of Excel sheets and it all came to life. Step by step, I suppose, I, uh, I filmed the introduction more than a year ago and I was so excited to start playing. And it's still funny when I watch that video to hear myself be so excited about it while the neighborhood is still almost completely empty. I've just plotted down a few Honeywell houses and everything else is just in my head. But um, yeah, that's, the excitement is still there. Um, <laughs> And now one year later, we've actually built a few of the houses. We've done the first episode, I mean the first season. We've done the fall season. We've done the first fall festival, which was so much fun to do also. And now that I'm ready to start sharing the Excel sheets with you, I'm kind of stuck with all of the different parts of the footage because chronologically it's not making any sense right now. So what I want to do in this video is uh, we're going to skip to the story part uh, in the second half of this video. But in this first part I want to share with you the Excel sheets that I keep mentioning and just walk you through the setup and how I use them. Uh, so yeah. Let's, uh, let's do that, let's just get started. And we are going to do that from Adriana's office. We are in her office right now, which is located in one of the four corners of the town hall. The first floor of the town hall is also where the social worker is located, where she has her office and where the treasurer of the town has his office. On the second floor, I should say, there are conference rooms, meeting rooms, and a room to have lunch in. And downstairs, there is room for the postal office and a police office, which is really, really small because it is just a desk and some workout equipment, equipment right now. But that is where the uh, police officer of the town comes daily to do her work. And if you come across some inconsistencies in time or money or balance or uh, anything else where the where the thing you see on screen doesn't really match with what I'm telling you. Just keep in mind that um, editing this video was uh, <laughs> such a mess. And uh, yeah, I decided to just tell you guys what I want to share with you. And uh, we'll see how this thing turns out. Also, this approach might be a perfect exercise for me because this channel more than anything has really been about trying to put having fun above trying to be perfect and trying to not let uh, the pressure of wanting to do everything in a perfect and complete way uh, ruin the fun that I'm having with this game and that I'm having with making videos and sharing something that I'm so passionate about on YouTube with you. So yeah, above all else, it's really been about embracing my own creations and as imperfect as they are, um, I know that I love to play in a custom neighborhood where I know that I've built a lot of the houses myself and that I've 
put the time and the effort into even organizing all of the clutter in the houses for the parts where I've done that yet and uh, not hitting myself over the head for the parts where I haven't done that yet and stuff like that and I know that so many of you can probably relate to that because I think we put so much pressure on ourselves in general not just with making videos but with so many other things in life I think we kind of just lose track about what it's all about and really experiencing the love that is out there and the excitement and enthusiasm that we find in this game especially um, I've put off making this video for at least a few months and it's not perfect in any way but what I really would like to do is share with you how I set up this town what uh, gave me the ideas and also just how I worked everything out in these excel sheets and um, who knows maybe even inspire you to create a custom neighborhood of yourself or show you some new ideas to add to one that you already have yeah so i hope you enjoy and uh, i hope you can forgive me for <laughs> not making this perfect not that my other videos were perfect in any way it's just uh, <laughs> this one is uh, especially and utterly chaotic <laughs> well I guess done is better than perfect. <laughs> Something I've um, heard a really wise woman say, and I think it's a, it's a perfect sentence to tell yourself every now and then. Done is better than perfect. And as long as you're enjoying it and you like what you've created, and you know, you can stand behind the message that you're sending, it's already perfect in itself. So um, yeah, let's take a look at the Excel sheets. So this is where it all started. This is the overview of the town's budget. And uh, of course it's an Excel sheet, but I made it into a PDF to, uh, well, for the purposes of showing it in this video. Anyway, uh, so here we have the town set up. Um, the starting money for the community was 1.8 million simoleons. Why? I am not sure. Uh, it felt like the right amount because it is it reflects the worth of the entire town. And I wanted to start out with, I tried 2 million, which was too much, and 1.5, which was a little bit, well, which, which fell a little bit short. So that's why I started out with 1.8. Um, then what happened is I built 6 low budget houses, 6 medium budget houses, and 7 high budget houses. And the town paid 10, 20, and 40,000 each to the contractor. So that is the amount that the town has paid to the contractor for building those houses. Now, this contractor has his own budget and we are going to take a look at that right after we finish this first part. Um, so that left the town with 1.340,000 simoleons. Then we have the basic community builds. Um, and I actually had an entire list of basic builds that I wanted to have that I thought were essential. Uh, you might have seen it earlier this video when I showed the blueprint. Um, but yeah, those are the basic budget choices that uh, I was able to build at the beginning. And in the future we are going to hire an architect to do all the designing of those buildings. So once again, I've taken inspiration from a setup that Annie uses. I just watched her video about the town hall and um, I always thought that the architects uh, should work at the contractor's office, which they are still going to do. But when they reach the top of their career, city planner, I think the city planner should really work for the town hall. So once we get there, probably in a few years from now, but uh, <laughs> once we get there, the city planner is going to work for the town hall to further uh, design this town. Um, so yeah, back to the Excel sheet. I've had to work around some gaps in the storyline anyway, um, because the contractor was alone. The contractor is Kristoff. He is here with a, uh, a budget that he received from his parents who are very wealthy in uh, the old neighborhood. Yeah, the, the way I kind of tied everything together is that he used his parents' connections, who probably know a lot of architects, 
to uh, come up for the, with the designs for these buildings and uh, that made it so that we didn't need an architect at the beginning but it was always the idea that there would be architects in the future because I also really liked the idea of designing a building where those architects would work and make that an, uh, an integrated part of this neighborhood. So the real basics at the beginning were of course the town square because I had this image in my mind of a really cozy small community, small town where a lot of lively events were held every every season or every actually maybe a few every season and uh, the whole community came together um, in uh, like in series as um, uh, Gilmore Girls or Virgin River of course some Stardew Valley inspiration which I really really love uh, so that that the whole town revolves around the town square uh, really <laughs> and then of course we have the town hall the parks there are a few, a few parks in town and uh, one of them I downloaded it is gorgeous I could never build a park like that I'm not good at building parks at all and I'm really happy that I found that one then we have a more structured old park behind the town hall which I don't think I've ever shown you and then the swimming pool um, it's in blue because that is still a budget i haven't built that yet but it was supposed to be there at the beginning um, so i kind of worked it into the sheet in this way uh, we are still going to build it it's going to be there but uh, it is not there right now it's just an empty space okay so that leaves the community with uh, 652,000 simoleons and then the mayor received a fee for every sim that moved in. So that is just something I wanted to do because um, doing it that way, it helps to see things in perspective, I think. Like uh, the more sims in town, the bigger the budget for building uh, community builds, stuff like that. So it's just a variable that I wanted to have in there. And whenever new sims move in, uh, the story is... Um, that it is at like a really remote place and um, since there aren't that many facilities yet sims don't necessarily people don't necessarily really want to live there um, so they receive a fee if they move there that's basically the the idea and um, yeah so the town services that uh, the, the absolute essentials that we started with there are going to be uh, a few more things in the future but we started out with a school a community center a library church and cemetery the orphanage and <laughs> the 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 um the one at the bottom was supposed to be a bank but uh i've moved that into the town hall so it's now just the mortgage funding um so that leaves the subtotal after the after subtracting subtracting the town services leaves the city with 225,000 simoleons and I've rounded that down to 225 round because I just wanted to have a nice number to work with <laughs> so uh, yeah that's how we are going to start and this is the amount that is on Adriana's bank account on the Tuesday after the meeting greet so I don't know about you but I need a little bit of a break I've been talking a lot about these excel sheets and I thought we would uh, take a little break and look at the traits that I gave all of the sims I've talked about that a little bit in my previous episode uh, but in this episode I want to really divide all of the traits um, between all of the sims so that's what we are going to do here of course we are going to continue the excel sheets later on in this video because there are still some things that i want to share with you uh, like the taxes and the town hall schedule and also a little bit about how i created the uh, the sims yeah but first let's take a look at the traits so what i did was i made a list of all 99 traits there is a link in the description under this video where you can find all of them and an explanation of what they do. And then I just made a list of all of the sims in this town and started crossing off traits. So all of the traits were only used once and I kept doing that until every sim in this town had two traits that are fitting to their character. I'm sure that we will talk about them in more detail in the upcoming episodes, 
but for now we'll just go through them all shortly. We can see that Valentina is really neat and nurturing, which represents her caring nature, wish to take care of her family and tendency to make everything around her as beautiful as possible. Kristoff has a star quality and loves to swim. His hobby is swimming and a star quality comes from his mother, who is actually a show business icon. She really has a larger than life mentality and that kind of rubbed off on both of her children, so both Kristoff and his sister Isabella. Then on to Vernon, he is socially awkward and a loner, which represents his shy nature. He won't be seen a lot on community lots and he likes to tend to himself. Jonathan is a hydrophobic, so we won't see him swimming and he can be a little bit dramatic. Ramon has had an interesting past before he came to Cherry Blossom Springs, so he's very adventurous and um, he's into the supernatural and really curious about science and everything that he can find out about what else is there in this world. On to Eduardo. He is of course very charismatic, liked by a lot of people and um, he knows how to talk to people and how to convince them um, and he's a workaholic so he doesn't mind spending a lot of time behind his desk. On to Daniel. He is a virtuoso <laughs> if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, which represents his love for music that he had in his childhood and in the band that he formed together with his three brothers. He still plays the piano, but it's not his hobby anymore, but he can perform if he wants to. And he is in general just a really good person. Uh, it doesn't really shine through in his personality per se, uh, but there's really not a bad bone in his body. He's just he is a good person <laughs> and in one of the upcoming episodes you will see how that is going to impact one of his major life choices and the last one that we'll show here is uh, Kate Sander she loves the heat which represents that she comes from a really warm country uh, we haven't really seen that much of her yet at least not about her background uh, she's also a daredevil she's not scared of anything and um, yeah, so the rest of the traits we are going to look at in the episodes. But please let me know if you do want a detailed uh, video. If you want to see which sim got which trait and why, and a little bit about my uh, reasoning behind it. Um, I thought it would be too long for the purpose of this video. But if you do want to see it and hear it, please let me know. I'll, I can make a separate video about it. And I can talk in more detail about how I use the traits and how they are going to influence the gameplay. What I basically did was choose two traits per sim that really define their personality or tell us something about their background or add something to their character that isn't visible through their personality and zodiac sign yet. In my latest video where we created the last 8 of the 32 sims in this generation, I've mentioned how I match the jobs to a unique DNA set and then go from there. So let's skip to the second oldest excel sheet uh, from even before the town hall budget and see what the idea behind these people was even before they had faces. So this is the sheet that I used to create all of these sims. I made them all in body shop and used this sheet to make sure that they were all unique. This is where I rolled for their aspiration, their zodiac sign, age, their funds that they were going to start with, their turn ons, turn offs and their hobbies and eventually their sub hobby. I used random.org for most of it and it was actually really fun to do. Every outcome is a little bit of a surprise and it gives you a little piece of the puzzle that one day will become a unique sim with a unique personality and I really love the process of doing that and seeing it all come together piece by piece. So uh, the only thing that is missing in here and that is because uh, otherwise the sheet would get way too big <laughs> is the DNA. I made sure that every set of DNA is unique so there are no two sims with the same combination of skin color, hair color and eye color. And um, okay, the way I did that is I made the sets of DNA and then I rolled which sim would get them. The only sims that I didn't do that with is the sims that I brought in here from Simsville. They already had DNA. So I used those and that's why there might be one or two doubles. Uh, I think Melissa and Kristoff have the same DNA set, but I'm not 
entirely sure I would have to check that anyway <laughs> the, all the other ones are unique and uh, the eight more that are coming because uh, there's uh, there's supposed to be 32 unique sims in this town they will also have a unique set of DNA by the time that this video comes out you will already have seen the eight new sims that we had to create so we have 32 now and uh, that is awesome because that means that our first generation is complete. We have the 32 unique sims. And I'd say there is an even representation of all the aspirations. In the first 24, I rolled for them randomly and there were definitely too many pleasure sims and too many romance sims. <laughs> that would make this town very, very complicated. So with the last eight, I used a different approach and it might be a little less random but I took out the pleasure sims um, and I think I added in one yeah I wanted one more romance sim and uh, I rolled for which one it was going to be and the others all got a different aspiration so we now have eight sims of every skin type eight sims of every hair color and an even use of the eye colors too the only thing that I did a little bit different with the last eight than with the first 24 is their personality. With the first 24, I took their personality from when I created them in game and I rolled for one of their uh, traits to be, uh, to be an extreme. And uh, with the last eight, I did something different. I actually rolled for all five of their personality traits. I'm not sure that I am going to use that method again, but it was fun to see how that was going to turn out. And uh, what I also did was I gave them interests, um, but I gave them fewer interest points in total than a normal sim would have. Basically because I wanted to test out the idea um, what if they had a specific set of interests um, so they wouldn't really match with in every conversation with every sim but they would be harder to connect to and i i just wanted to test that theory out and uh, that's why i did that with the last eight uh, which is not shown in this excel sheet but um, yep it's there <laughs> there are so many ways to choose an aspiration based on a sim's personality and for me personally i don't always like that all my Scorpio sims are fortune sims and that all outgoing sims are popularity sims and therefore everyone is successful. I kind of like the idea of a popularity sim that is really shy or a fortune sim that is really lazy so he'd rather get the money instead of work for it. Yeah, so I've always liked the idea of giving my sims a struggle. I even did that back in the day in my old custom neighborhood. There was really not a system to it, but um, they struggled. They struggled. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just think their personalities become much more lifelike and realistic. Well, for one, if they are not all the same and if there is some depth to their personality. So that's something that I really, really enjoy about this game, that you can add depth by making unique combinations of personality and wishes and stuff like that. Um, but also uh, with the depth that you see in them and that you can add to them. So, so that's why especially the traits make it that, there is, that it is possible to add another layer to their personality. So enough about Sims and their personality, let's go back to the town hall and see what else there is to see about the finances. So here we are back to the sheet that we started with. Later on in this video, I am going to show you how we are going to use this every round to keep track of the town's budget during the rounds. The idea behind working with a budget is that it gives the game an extra tycoon-like aspect. I used to love playing tycoon games when I was younger and I always loved the challenge of making businesses or cities run as efficient as possible. Having more money than I can spend is no fun, so that's why I tried to balance out this entire town in a way that both the city and the sims have to carefully balance their budgets to make ends meet and to grow. So as a side note, can you guess what my job is? <laughs> Put it in the comments if you think you know. <laughs> so at the beginning of this video we went over the left part of this excel sheet. Now the contractor he has his own budget and his own system. So like I mentioned he started out with 460,000 simoleons 
and that is the the amount of money that he received for building all of the houses in town. Of course, there were some expenses uh, for building those lots. So, so that was 12 and 14. And that is the amount that he paid to the carpenter, which is Robin, Robin Carver. And that it was her starting amount. So I rolled for everyone's budget, but the carpenter I and the contractor I actually, actually calculated. I wish I could have done that for all of the sims, but <laughs> there wasn't really a system behind everything. So just the carpenter and the contractor, uh, I calculated what their starting budget would be. So Robin started out with 26,000 simoleons and that is how she bought her house. After uh, subtracting the furnishings and the material costs, uh, Christoph was left with 240,000 simoleons. Now that was not on his bank account when he started because of course he also bought, built the town shops. So there are supposed to be eight essential shops around the town square. I've mentioned this a few times, but they're still not there. <laughs> I haven't built, um, most of them I haven't built, I've built two. I, I built the bakery and I built the clothing store. And that's actually the two shops that are in use right now. So, Christoph can't help it that I'm lazy with the building <laughs> and that I have been too busy with my work to actually have my creative time in The Sims. So um, in his finances, this, these, this 200,000 is already subtracted because he owns, he already owns the shops. They have already been built and he already owns them. And it's really just a matter of time before we build the rest of them and Christoph will receive his money for the new buildings too. So yeah, that leaves him with 40,000 simoleons and he, this is at the bottom, but it should actually be right at the top because he also built the construction offices. And that's the actual number of the lot, uh, the price of the lot that, that you can see in, uh, in build or in buy mode. So at the start he had 1600 cash. That's not a lot, that's not a lot, but it was enough. Then right at the start, uh, like I said, the bakery Sweet Delight was already built, Dress and Go was built, and both, all of these businesses are going to cost 30,000 simoleons for the sim that is going to own them and work in them. So yeah, he received 30,000 30, simoleons from Natasha and 30,000 from Jonathan. And then the next two shops that we are going to build is Fix It, which is going to be the electrician's uh, shop, like the handyman, repairman, and the bell, book and candle, which is going to be the decoration shop. Now I totally stole that name, uh, but I love it. So I'm going to keep it. <laughs> it's actually a working name when I was um, designing this project or whatever you call it. Uh, but I'm going to keep it because I really love that name. So it's, it's staying in, it's staying in. Okay, so that's the first part of this sheet. Then, of course, like I said, we are going to start with 225,000 simoleons. And that is when we are going to move to the second sheet. Which is this one. Now, this is where the town's finances are going to start. And we're going to take a look at this when we skip to Eduardo's office because he is the treasurer. So it makes sense that he would make the payments and stuff. So on the work days that Eduardo works, he usually comes in around 10 and starts working behind his desk. And he has a nice view on the elementary school and the main street. And also the church and the fountains right outside. His job is both being the treasurer of this town and giving the people in this town mortgage advice. He's also the person that is handing out the loans and keeping track of the payments and interest that everybody owes. The town hall is going to be a lot of micromanaging and even though I really love that, I don't want my game to be all about that. So that is why I came up with this system. Uh, all of the finances, the meetings, the micromanaging stuff, it all takes place only from the household of Adriana and only two to three days a week. Now, since this neighborhood has uh, 19 households so far in the future, probably between 16 and 20 households, it's only one of those households where I do all these finances and micromanaging stuff. So it's kept to a minimum 
but still enough for me to enjoy <laughs> playing this, uh, playing it this way. So usually she is going to come in on Monday, but since Monday was all about the meet and greet, it's now a Tuesday and this is her first day on the job. Um, so normally Tuesday and Wednesday she is going to work at her, I said it as a custom job. She There is a, a career track, political career track for the mayor. But I gave her the custom job of the mayor because it has some it has some different times. So that is why that is. Um, so the Monday is the day where all the meetings take place. We have the city council meeting. Uh, she is going to do her payments, pay the salaries and all stuff like that. Then on Thursday we have another day with meetings, city council and this time also the commercial meeting. Then on Friday she is going to go to her custom job again. On Saturday she is going to visit businesses around town to keep up the relationship with everyone and just keep an eye on how everything is running in her town. And then on Sunday she is going to come into the office again at the end of the day, so from 4 to 8 and uh, have another meeting and this is actually the meeting where most of the decisions are made about the town's development. So Adriana is almost ready for lunch so that's a perfect time to make some payments. She is going to transmit through the bank account 200 to Rick and the same amount to Rosa. 200 because those were the amounts that she owed them for their services during the week. Now, this is not really an interesting sheet, it's just uh, something I started because I uh, was afraid that I would lose track, but I'm not so sure that I'm going to keep this in, because she will just make the payments as they are due. But for now, it was, uh, it was kind of helpful, and um, you can also see that uh, future expenses are already on here because we know that on Saturday there's going to be a fall festival and uh, after that Adriana is going to have to pay Daniel for his catering services and his musical performance. So that's going to happen on Sunday and Sunday is actually the first day of the second round. It's in the first week but it's the second round so that's in the future and we're going to do that when we come back here after the fall festival on Sunday. Uh, yeah, so there's one more thing that she needs to do because Eduardo's bank account is the mortgage fund so he cannot transmit through the bank account and he is going to pay the salaries and stuff. So that means that we are going to have to withdraw 35500 So bank online, online she's going to withdraw 30 then another five and 500 so that leaves let's see 159 and 100 in the bank account of the town so yeah i guess she's ready for lunch of course they all have lunch together but the lunch room isn't finished yet so we will have to get back to that in the next round the idea is that all of the sims walk around town and buy food regularly, so they should have food in their inventory. And they can just take turns sharing their croissants or their sandwiches or whatever they bought at the bakery or the, or the bar. And if nobody has any of those, they can just call Daniel and he will deliver some sandwiches. And of course the town hall will then pay for those sandwiches. The third person working in this town hall is of course Therese Salvini. She is the social worker and is also in charge of the adoptions around town. For now she also runs the orphanage, but since there are only two orphans in there who might get adopted in the second round, she might get a slight change of job in the second round. And that is actually something that we are going to see in the fourth episode of this spring season. So on to the fun stuff. <laughs> so this is Eduardo's part of the sheet. Um, he is the town's treasurer. And like I mentioned, the town is starting out, started out at the beginning of the first round with 225,000 simoleons. Now, every sim in town is going to pay a certain amount of taxes based on their net worth minus their cash, because I don't think it's fair to 
text them for owning cash. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's going to be net worth minus cash. And um, the only reason that we are seeing a, seeing a blank here is uh, that there's no Sunday in the first round. So I have a five day season, which means that the first season ended on Saturday and Sunday is going to be the first day of the second round. And all the Sims are going to pay taxes, but they are going to do that in the winter season. So we're going to see that later. And we have no tax income in the first round. But we have a big pile of cash to start with, so that's basically okay. <laughs> um, same for the business tax. No Sunday in round one. And I have a system for business tax too, which I will show you later. Um, then on to the streetlights funding and the cherry tree funding. The thing is, the town, I was, um, I was kind of tired of... <laughs> I was kind of done with decorating because you can only handle so much of the same thing, I guess. And um, I thought it would be fun. So the, the community lots all have uh, like the community style, I guess. So the lighting, the trees, I want it to be all kind of in the same style. And I kept all of the houses pretty basic. And I thought it would be a fun and realistic idea that in a new town, the town would uh, give every household a little bit of funding to decorate their house accordingly. Now, some of the sims are still going to move. So I'm going to see how to deal with that. But today we're going to hand out all of those funds to all of the households. So it doesn't cost them any money to put up some street lights, maybe a fire hydrants and uh, stuff like that trees uh, trees can be pretty expensive and of course i could cheat some extra money in for them to do that so it wouldn't cost them any money but for me it's kind of more fun to keep it in the realm of cherry blossom springs so i'm going to let the town provide the funds for them to decorate their lot pretty much okay so that's the two times thirty six thousand, and then the commercial development yeah, that's the, that's the contractor again, that's Kristoff, and we've already seen the commercial committee discussing which uh, community lot they are going to build next, but it's a, kind of a given for now that they are going to assign 40,000 simoleons for the new contract. And uh, what that is going to be, we will have to see. <laughs> uh, of course, for that 40,000, Kristoff's going to build something. He is going to make some costs and he can either sell the lot or rent the, the lot to someone renting it for their business to run a business in there and uh, so that's what the anti columns of are for once the lot is built we'll know what to do with it and the contractor will have his very own part in this uh, town's finances thingy then the town development that's actually the town services that are going to develop um, you see that the swimming pool the build is in progress well it's not actually in progress i still have to begin <laughs> in my head it's already built uh, and there's no amount behind that uh, on that line because um, it's already in the first sheet we already have a budget for that it's seventy five thousand, around seventy five thousand. at least for the future i thought it would be realistic to build one or two lots per season uh, once i have the beginning and all the essentials done so that's why that is in there then on to the stipends or wages. These are the fixed amounts that are going to be paid to all of the community services every week. So Lorraine is receiving 3000 simoleons for running community center. And of course it is supposed to go to the expansion or improvement of the community center, but it's also a little bit up to the sim to know to decide what to do with the money. Uh, Reginald is going to receive 3,000 simoleons for the church, Therese 3,000 for the orphanage, and Sophie 1,000 for the library, which makes an even 10 for uh, community services. And then the next one, those are all the sims that have actual jobs within the game. So they get paid a certain amount which basically comes out of no comes out of nowhere. So to make that one realistic, it would it would seem logical that the town would pay those amounts. So I calculated what it would be. It's pretty much rounded. Uh, all of the all of the amounts are rounded, but it is based on the 
level of job that they actually have right now. So for instance, Adriana, the mayor, she has, uh, of course, the mayor's job, and that is 1313 per day. She is going to go to her job four days a week. So that makes 52 hundred and something um so that's why i'm going to donate so that money is going to disappear five thousand simoleons every week uh because adriana received that money out of nowhere so that way the money that is going around within the community uh stays balanced stays leveled so sixteen thousand five hundred we are going to donate and adrienne is going to do that every sun every monday so the taxes are going to take place on sunday on monday she's going to come in to her office have the, the meetings and um, provide the funding the commercial committee the stipends the wages and the donations and then we have room for some if the town is doing well, we can decide which uh, facilities or basically this can be anything uh, to receive some extra funding or extra donations. So for this first round, I chose the children's home because it was really, really empty and the early bird elementary because they needed the lunchroom. So I chose those two facilities to give some extra money to this season. And that's what we're going to do today um, and then of course at the end of every season we'll have a festival and that's going to cost money we have the decorations and the equipment and this this is just an amount that i set aside it's basically a budget um, we don't know what it's going to cost yet i've built some of the decorations but not all of it and um, entertainment and food that's just money spent on things that are going to disappear, I guess. It's just the music and the food. Uh, the decor and the equipment stays. Adriana is going to take that home and bring that into storage so she can use it in the coming years. Um, so that is basically an investment. And that means that the cost of, of the future festivals might be not as high as this one, as this first one. So the festival profits and the return for the rented items that's the amount that she's going to get back when she's going to sell some of the decorations that were temporary, like the, uh, I don't know what to call those, but um, like those marketplace things above the stalls. It's it's in build mode, so you can only, uh, you, you can take them home. Uh, so we're going to delete those. And of course I could just uh, delete them in other ways so that it won't give her back any money but this is the way I wanted to do it so um, yeah so that's it and then at the end of the week she's going to receive two bank interest payments so that means that the amount that is on her bank account will gain interest and that is because uh, that's um, I guess one of the basic settings for a money exact computer and I really like that so I'm going to keep that in and um, it means that at the end of this round, she will have 27,000 simoleons extra. Other expenses and payments, that's the previous sheet that we... That's on another sheet and, uh, well, the town can always have other expenses budget. <laughs> it makes sense. Um, at the end of the round, I'm going to do the finances, make sure that the subtotal at the end of the first rotation after taxes is the exact amount that is on Adriana's bank account because that will be the funding for the second round. So we'll have the same sheet again. And this is what we're going to do every season. So I do love this micromanaging part of it. And I do love the realism and I do love Excel sheets and I do love budgeting and all of that. Uh, <laughs> and I also love that I found a way to bring all of that into this game. Um, but I don't wanna be doing that every single day that I'm playing The Sims. So that's why it's going to be only in Adriana's household, only when we play the town hall and only every Sunday and Monday. So that's it's restricted to just a part of the gameplay. And I and I think it's, uh, it's going to work out great. So yeah, that's it. Around four o'clock, the investment results for that day are in and Adriana and Eduardo will discuss their next move. Therese goes home around 5 and Eduardo stops working at 6. So that will leave Adriana to clean up, close off and go to her evening plans. 
which usually consists of going to Daniel's bar or working somewhere at home to get better at her job. Of course today, since we are looking at footage from the first round here, we are not going to go home, we are not going to go to the bar, we are going to skip to the Sunday after the fall festival and see how Adriana spent that first day in the second round. Also, I think this is what happens when you try to do voiceovers, when you have clearly had too much coffee. So <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this kind of video. I hope you've enjoyed me rambling. Uh, if you do, leave a like. If you didn't, please tell me to. And um, yeah, let's just move over to the town square. Here you can see what it looks like when it's completely empty. I hadn't decorated it yet before I did the fall festival decorations. Uh, it is supposed to be a park. Uh, even when there is no festival. Uh, so we might actually do that, but chances are that uh, Spring Festival is going to be there before I get the time to do that. So um, it doesn't really matter. There's another park that the Sims can visit if they actually want to go to a park as a community lot. So here we can see that Adriana is storing all of the stuff that we used at the fall festival in the town storage. Now this is completely extra. There is absolutely no reason to do this. But I kind of like the idea of having it in storage. Plus, I don't like scrolling through the custom content and there are some items that I really like and that would be realistic that they would use it next year again. So that's why I stored all of that here. Chances are, since uh, in real time, the, fall, the next fall festival is actually going to be one year after the, the previous fall festival. I will have tons of new custom content, but um, yeah, I kind of liked doing it this way. So we have a nice messy storage room and we'll probably build one for the winter stuff too. So I think I promised you that we were going to look at the story of Adriana. Now I think I've mentioned before um, that she is 19 years old. She was 19 years old at the start of the first round, round I should say. She is um, 24 years old right now. And um, that is really, really young to become a mayor. She's always been daddy's girl. She was really close to her dad. Didn't really know her mother. Uh, she was out of the picture from a really, really young age. So she grew up with her dad and her dad taught her everything that she knows. She thought she was going to be the mayor's daughter and live in luxury for the coming few years. And um, that he would pay for her college and stuff like that. But things turned out different. Uh, he died at the age of 60, so really unexpected. And um, that kind of left her in charge of the, this new town because her father's... Well, let's just say that there were some nice incentives in his will for, the, uh, for his political connections to put her in charge. So it wasn't really their choice. It sure wasn't really her choice. She would have loved to go to college and even though she liked being daddy's little girl and also liked living the life of luxury. Who knows how things would have turned out for her if she had gotten the chance to become independent in that way. It probably would have meant for her that she would lead a completely different life than she does right now. Uh, she is in charge of a town and even though it is small and it is new, she has a lot of responsibilities. She's actually trying to live up to that, so... She's not walking away from her responsibilities and taking the easy way out. She's really trying to make something of herself and um, trying to walk in her father's footsteps, I guess, and becoming someone important. So on the Sunday after the fall festival, she didn't wake up in her home alone. She really headed off with Daniel almost right from the start when they met. And even though at first they kind of sneaked around and only saw each other and nobody could see them, the, during the fall festival they kissed in front of everyone and they fell in love with each other. So on the one hand she kind of looks up to him, he's not that much older than her, but at her age seven years really is a lot. He was 26 when she was 19 and Daniel is of course really really charming, confident and he doesn't seem to have a care in the world. And even though that on the other hand she kind of looks down on him for not being rich, not having the status that she's really looking for in a man. Um, he's not able to make her look better in the eyes of the, uh, of the rest of the people in town. At least not from her point of view, because 
It's just something that her father taught her how important status and money is and reputation and she is going about it in the only way that she knows how and that is to go after the money and the power. And um, I think she also kind of realizes not being able to go to college that uh, she also needs knowledge to get ahead in life and that that is what she is focusing on right now. And I think that is, uh, Daniel is just not, he's not one to think about stuff like that. He's, <laughs> he just loves to be around people, entertaining them and uh, he likes to be around women and uh, entertaining them. <laughs> and um, yeah, he's just, it's just, I don't want to say that status is just not in his vocabulary. He doesn't care about that at all. And uh, Adriana does, but I don't think that he's aware of that. So I'm not even sure that she is aware of that in a really conscious, on a really conscious level. It's just not the kind of conversations that they are having right now. And at their age, I guess, um, I don't think they're consciously thinking about their relationship at all. It's just more a case of passion taking over. And even though she is fallen, falling for Daniel, in the back of her mind, she, she can't sh shake the idea that she needs a man with more status and a different kind of job in the community for her to be successful and to really fit that expectation of the traditional couple that she has in her head, that she really wants to be. So we don't know if uh, Adriana and Daniel have a future together. They did have fun together, and that might have had some unforeseen consequences that probably neither of them will know how to handle. So yeah, I guess <clears throat> instead of this video, video turning out to be all about the finances and some boring business stuff and uh, <laughs> Excel sheets and stuff like that without, uh, without too much interaction or action or, or anything. It turned out to be a video of me rambling uh, to uh, pretty much random footage. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I actually enjoyed making this. So I hope you enjoyed watching it. Again, if you did, let me know. If you didn't, let me know too. And if you're enjoying this series, you can really help out the channel by subscribing, hitting the notification bell, it will uh, really help the channel out. The note hitting the notification bell makes sure that you won't miss any of my new videos coming out. And uh, you can follow along on this journey. Journey of imperfection and a journey of creating a really cool custom neighborhood of your own that you personally really love and uh, want to keep playing in. And uh, next episode we'll try to go back to uh, storyline and... Uh, Picking up where we left off with all of the households and uh, stuff that is going to happen for them in the spring season. So I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching and uh, take care. Bye!